There, it's Sandy Alnock, and today I will be coloring a tiki hut beach scene in colored pencil. And it's a new stamp set from Sunny Studio Stamps. It was released recently, and I'll be using my Prismacolor colored pencils for it. If you want to know what the colors are, they'll be listed on the blog. But here is the stamp set, the tiki bar, and a couple of accoutrements that you can stamp along with it. I'm using Stonehenge drawing paper and my Prismacolors, as I said, and I stamped in two parts. I stamped first the Tiki Bar in no line ink in my Misty, and while it was still set up, I blocked off everything below the Tiki Bar sign on the Tiki Bar stamp and just stamped the Tiki Bar in black, and then I did the same thing for the bottom section. So all I had to do was stick Post-it notes on it. No fancy masking was needed. I'm starting by putting some uh, tan kind of colors, a cream and then a tan, and then I'll start to work my way toward browns because I wanted to create some light coming from the tiki torches on either side of the bar. And so that means the light's going to hit those two sides and not the center. So the center will get darker. And I also stamped this in lighter ink so I could be in control of the texture because the stamp has kind of cartoony lines drawn on it and I wanted something that felt more realistic for my scene. And so I stamped all the rest because I know I can work with the rest, but I didn't know if I could change the character of some of those wavy lines that are on the tiki bar roof. But I knew I could create this interesting texture just by creating it with my colored pencils. I normally don't do full scene colored pencil cards, you may have noticed here on my YouTube channel, because they take so long. This is already sped up to 200% in order to get it into a reasonable time frame, because I lose viewers rapidly if the video is too long. So this is uh, sped up for that purpose. But also, I just don't do a whole lot of these. However, there is a new playlist of the few that are out here that I, I would consider advanced, which is what I would consider this. And there's also an intermediate and beginner and a getting started and a colored pencil flowers. So if you're interested in any of those, there are playlists for them here on YouTube, and I have a couple of them already in visual formats. If you want to look at them on inspiration posts on my blog, there's pictures of all the things before you get to them. So you don't have to sit and scroll through a playlist. You could just look through the pictures real quick and decide which one you want to go see. So I have them in both formats if you're interested, and links to all that are in the doobly do. Now let's get back to the card itself. I'm using the same colors for the tiki bar wood front as well as the sand and the roof. I just wanted those parts to be all the same so I didn't have a ton of color all over this. There's going to be a beautiful sunset in the background. I knew I wanted to have that be a feature and I wanted the tiki torches to be really bright and strong and I want a dark sky up at the top section. So I needed something to be a little tame on the card so it would be a little calmer and have the majority of the card being those colors and they're also warm colors and I'm going to use some cool colors elsewhere in the picture so it makes for a nice contrast. The Gamsol blending solution comes out next and I'm going to use it on the Tiki Bar front to make these slats by using the blending stump to make vertical strokes. That's going to keep it feeling like wood instead of going back and forth sideways to try to blend it perfectly. I'm trying to keep that wood feel and I'll use the side of it when I start working on the sand down below, the side of the blending stump, because that's going to give me longer strokes. I'll do the same thing when I get to the sky. And the Gamsol that's in my little cup, if you haven't seen me use my Gamsol before, I pour it from the bottle into this little container that has a lid on it and put a couple cotton balls in it that I change out periodically because they start absorbing color after a while. But I put it in there so that I can be in control of how much of the Gamsol ends up on my blending stump. Because if you put it into straight liquid, you're going to end up with the whole thing soaking wet. And if you have it, though, in a cotton ball, then you can decide whether you're going to press a little bit and just pick up a little bit of blending solution. Or if you want to really soak it, you press it in and you can soak up more of the liquid. But it gives me more control to have it in that kind of a container. So I've added shadows underneath of those bushes, which you could also stamp in the top corners in order to make it look like pi uh, pine trees, palm trees. <laughs> they don't have pine trees here, they have palm trees. And um, 
I decided to make them little shrubberies instead because I wanted my sky to be a much simpler sky because I want my sentiment to be up there on the top portion of the card. And here I'm coloring in the different greens in these little shrubberies. I put some bright green on the areas where I think the tiki torch might shed some light. So just on whatever part is sticking out. And if you ever are in a, in a chance, have a chance to look at a plant when it's in very strong light like this, you have one light source and then everything else in the room is on the darker side, you'll start to notice that there are some areas that do stick out further. So they do catch the light. And I always advise my students to just pay attention to the world around you. You know, just sit there in a restaurant and look at the light that hits different objects, whether it's tables or people or you know, walls or whatever, and see where the light's coming from and what kinds of shadows and highlights it's making. And that's going to help you to become a better artist because you're going to be able to see better. So these are the verticals that are in this that I'm going to recommend you not do if you try to replicate this scene. <laughs> Go get this stamp set and stamp them, but don't do any of the coloring of those verticals until you finish the sky. The reason is because when I get to starting to do any blending, then I risk taking that blending stump and touching some of the brown and dragging it into the sky. So it's going to make it harder to do that blending. Sometimes I even do my skies before I do the rest of a scene, just because of that reason. It's just going to help to not mix colors when you're trying to keep them from blending together. So I have some yellow down here at the horizon and I'm going to add the blue for the horizon line and I use my T-square to do that so I can make sure for once something is straight on one of my cards. I don't always do that and I always end up regretting it it seems because when I'm working and trying to film I'm looking at it a little bit of an angle. I'm not looking at it straight on and I get crooked. But I'm going to fill this in. The smoother your blending is when you're just doing the colored pencil part, the easier the blending is going to be when you get to the gamsol part. So even though the gamsol is going to save your bacon a lot, it's also going to be easier to blend it well if you do the blending first really nicely. And practicing that and keeping a good sharp pencil are going to be two things that will help you a lot. If you're new to colored pencil and you're like, I have no idea what she's talking about, then the colored pencil jumpstart class might be one you're interested in because that teaches you a lot about basic blending for, uh, for using colored pencils and a lot of different techniques. There's different tools that you can learn to use that will make you more successful in your colored pencil work. So next up is adding some color to the sky. Now I was looking at a picture on Google. I tell you all the time, go find pictures to inspire you. And I found this gorgeous sky where the strip of bright yellow was right around that sun and down the horizon. It went into this really pale blue and then started merging up into a, kind of a really nice medium blue at the top. And that's what I wanted to create. It also had some clouds in there. And clouds are interesting when you start trying to do something that goes from close up to far distant in the horizon line. The further out it is, the more they're almost a line. And then when they get closer to you, they're larger and they're poofier. And there's some that can be really, really big and poofy. And that's because you're looking at them at a different angle. If you ever look up at the sky, you're looking at the bottom of a cloud. If you look out at the distance, you're seeing the side of the cloud. And that's one of the reasons why it's basic perspective. So I've got my clouds down there and I'm going to do some blending with them later. But now I'm going to start working into that nice medium blue up at the top, medium to dark. And I debated how dark to get. I didn't film all of the coloring of that part because it does take a long time and skipped right here to the blending of it. And don't worry, you're not missing anything at the top of the page, even though it's, though it's cut off. I was trying to stay nice and close so you could see the work being done, but it's just blue. It's, that's all there is. I was going to put some large clouds up there and decided after I saw it kind of coming together that I didn't want that because I wanted my sentiment to be stamped up there in white. So I'm gonna do some heat embossing for my sentiment. And I wanted that to stay just in a nice, plain, empty area. And I already had enough details elsewhere in this card that I did not need another thing in the picture to start distracting. 
But notice how nice and white those tiki torches start to look when I start adding more and more color and it gets darker and darker behind it. So I get the contrast. It's what I'm always saying is contrast is your friend. If you can create areas where there's a really dark dark next to a really light light, that becomes immediately the place where people's eye is going to look. So I'm going to finish off a few of the details now in this. The tiki bar sign at the top did get some oopses in my blending. Not going to worry about it, just going to go right through it and then start adding in a light yellow and then a darker yellow for the tiki torch fires. And I'm going to leave the centers white. There's sometimes when you'll get a little orange or a little red in there. And I didn't want to be adding any colors at this point. So no red would be added. My drinks, I'm even including a blue drink. And I'll do the other drink in yellow just to stay with the color scheme. And then I darkened up the front of the hut a little bit, which had seemed so dark before. But compared to everything else now, just needed a little more definition. So my finished card is pictured here. You can see all the lovely details in the scene. If you're interested in what the colors are, they're over on my blog on this post. So you can check those out and replicate this for yourself. There's also some links to the inspiration posts that I've already created using colored pencil if you want to see more of them. If you have not yet subscribed yet, please do so and click the all button when you click the bell because that's going to deliver all my videos to you. Whereas personalized, they kind of choose what they want to personalize for you. So you may not see all the videos and be notified of them. Thank you so much for clicking the like button. I will see you again very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.